we'll have our, uh, our existing libraries need to be adapted to work with this software. Because we're coming to the next part, uh, which is, of course, the synchron library, synchron series, all come with multiple microphones. So we have to have find a way to make them accessible easily within one instrument. I see that time is running. Now I can, of course, everything, that, that's the, the second thing that you need to know about this tree structure. Whatever I'm clicking in here, this cell contains everything that's on the right-hand side of it, right? So depending on what you do, if I'm on, the, on this or this or this cell, I always see on the right-hand side, that's what I would delete if I clicked delete. Okay. That also means that everything I edit down here on the edit page, we have four pages, perform, control, edit, and mix. Everything I change in the edit page from the ADS R to uh, octave settings or send tunings, everything I do in here always affects everything that's to the right side of my, of my used cell. Is this an editor? Yeah. How do you adjust it? Not. Just let you basically you have uh, eight velocity eight parts where you where you can chime in there. If you st if I start the crescendo at with uh, midi with midi velocity one, it starts at pianissimo, and then it goes tw thirty two seconds. That's true. We didn't do that for these because they're so easily controllable. If I wanted to control the length here, I'd switch in velocity crossfade, and maybe I'd start with pianissimo. Let's do it like this. And then I can use velocity crossfade to just accelerate. And also have the release sample at the right time. You can release it at any time you want. You always get the right release sample. There's quite some logic going on in the background so that you always get the right release sample depending. We have measured how f where the right release sample sits depending on which sample you're triggering at the time. It's very similar to the, pia to the piano that we recorded. So that's, um, so that's basically taken care of. Um, I know that time is crazily running. Let me just get you through this. Um, uh, thing. So we have the perform page, that's everything you want to control. The control page basically gives an overview of everything that's assigned, the dimension controls, the expression, master volume, whatever you want to add here. If I say, ah, true dynamics, I'm going to talk about later. Uh, the, I have the dynamic range, so I want that to be CC42, okay, and it's added here and I have that here. So I have an overview here and I can assign different curves. The edit page, give, give, uh, edit page gives me a way to edit the the basics and the ADSR and, and octave settings. And now is a very important part, the mix settings. Let me just quickly switch back to this, uh, to this keynote here. So you have stereo surround and immersive audio possibilities. And we're going to listen to a piece here with immersive audio because we can. Um, that means that you have not only have uh, a surround uh, level, but you also have a height layer that, that, uh, that can add just a lot of the perception of the instrument. Um, that means multiple microphones that we recorded, and this is just a, a, an example of how that would look. So you have the Decca tree, just to visualize what's going on in a recording situation. The surround microphones, the high stereo on top of the Decca tree, the high surround. So each of the further you are away, the higher you are uh, positioning those, instrument, those microphones in the hall, the more diffused the sound of the room gets. And that can be... Get, get, especially the high surrounds will give you a very wide feeling and ambience of the hall. And for every orchestral recording, the question is, uh, which microphones do you use for which sound? And you want to use as little as possible, but as many as necessary. So you have uh, a back microphone and a mid microphone and a close microphone. So you have three basically close microphones that capture the, the, the real sound of the instruments and these additional room microphones that capture the room and the, uh, the, room, the, the sound of the room. And for the Synchron series, we have a standard library that gives you the Decca tree, the mid and the close microphones, and the full library gives you all the other round microphones that are great to mix for anything that you're uh, using. If you're down mixing these microphones to your stereo signal, you can really shape the depth and the, and the density of the sound. Okay, so that's the full library. Let me just show you the seating positions because now we've the, the Synchron series and the Synchron percussion 
are all recorded in place, so you have perfect placement. And you can see here that for the first violins, you have the back mic captures the second row of the ensemble, the close mic, the ensemble leader, the mid mic in front of the ensemble, then you have the decca tree, the high surrounds, and the, uh, and the, and the surround stereo, what is it? <laughs> high surrounds, high stereo, high surround. High surround, right? The surround, high surround, and the stereos. Um, so and that's that's the same system for all the all the players, and you always have the seating just as you like them. And how many of you are using synchron strings already? Ah, way too little. You have to get them. Um, but now, what we did is uh, you have synchron strings in here, and we've organized them pretty cool with uh, folders. So right now. You can use everything you can do here in here with a, uh, let me just open that up. So I have the close microphone, the mid microphone, back microphone, main microphone. I have it all lined up in Vienna Ensemble and it's all on the same MIDI channel. It's sexy and you have to kind of get how you operate it, but it's so much nicer again in the Synchron player. Because right here you have a mixer, um, a mixer setting that lets you load and unload samples whenever you want to. So in here, I can decide for every microphone channel how I want to shape the sound with a five-band EQ that you might know from Synchron, uh, from uh, Vienna Suite and Vienna Suite Pro. So I can do whatever I like in here, just play around. Uh, and that's for every instrument and every, uh, every microphone. You have a delay because you can adjust the runtime the time that the um, uh, sound takes from the player to the microphone. I can actually say I want my uh, high surrounds uh, maybe a little bit further away, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put seven milliseconds more to them. I'm gonna have a bigger impression of the room, or maybe I want them a little bit closer. Then I can adjust a little bit of ad uh, additional reverb. You can uh, mix in this uh, integrated reverb here, and of course you have the panning. So for the cellos, they're sitting to the right, and the close mid mic and the back mic would be assigning the position of those players. <laughs> 